Good morning. Good morning, Source Church. We want to welcome you this morning to our Sunday morning broadcast service. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and click, tag, and share. Invite someone to the service this morning. Have them to check in so they can get ready for this good word on this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's go before God in prayer on this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Dear God, Heavenly Father, as we come before you, thanking you and praising you for your many blessings, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for allowing us to see another day, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for the activity of our limbs, Lord God. We thank you for the blood that's still running warm in our veins, oh God. Lord, we just want to thank you and praise you, God, for breath in our body, oh God. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy, oh God. Thank you for your new mercies, God, every morning, hallelujah. Thank you, oh God, for your mercy, oh God. Lord, we thank you right now, Father God, for one more chance just to lift your name up. Lord, as we come before you today with thanksgiving and singing and praise in our hearts, oh God, we ask that you bless the praise team on this morning. Let them sing praises unto your wonderful name, God. Remember our pastor on this morning as he comes before us with the word. Touch him, oh God. Touch him, oh God. We thank you right now, oh God, for the mouthpiece of God, the man of this house, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, oh God. Open our hearts today, Lord God, that we may, be, that we may receive what you have for us on today. Oh, God, we just want to say thank you. Because if you don't do anything else, oh, God, you've done more than enough. And we thank you, oh, God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
strength of my life.
yes, I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. Mm. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Oh, I want to see you. See, that's the only way that you can see him. You got to see him through your heart. Because in all actuality, circumstances sometimes say that I shouldn't see him in his glory. Situations sometimes say that I shouldn't see him as who he is. But am I talking to anybody out there that know that we serve a good God? Is there anybody out there that know that we serve a great God? Are you willing to set aside everything that you face on this week and give him praise right where you are? Are you willing to set aside everything that you've gone through and give him praise right where you are? I dare you to open up your mouths and begin to praise our God. Anybody know that we serve a good God? Anybody know that we serve a great God? Anybody know that we serve a wonderful God? I dare you to open up your mouths and shout with a voice of triumph. I came to talk to some believers this morning that know that they're victorious and you're willing to worship him in spite of what you've gone through. You're willing to worship him in spite of what you're facing. You're willing to worship him in spite of all the circumstances and adversity that has come up against you. I will let nothing rob me of my praise. I will let nothing rob me of my worship. I will let nothing rob me of my hallelujah. I will let nothing rob me of my thank you, Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. I dare somebody to praise him in spite of. Is there anybody that have an in spite of praise? Is there anybody that have an in spite of thank you? Is there anybody that have an in spite of? Lord, I love you is there anybody to have an in spite of God I will praise you I will praise you even when my circumstances don't add up I will praise you even when adversity is all around me because I know that you are the God that will deliver me you are the God that will set me free and I will give you glory I just want to see you I just want to see you I just want to see you high and lifted up. I just want to see you in all of your glory. You're wonderful. He's awesome. He's great. He's magnificent. Yeah, this is your opportunity to praise him right where you are. You should be praising him now. You should be praising him by now. You should be praising him by now. Yeah, you have thought of all the things that he's done you should be praising him by now yeah you've thought of his goodness you should be praising him by now you thought of all the ways that he's made you should be praising him right now you thought of all the times he brought you out you should be praising him right now I don't know who I'm talking to but I challenge you this morning that if you can praise him he can change it if you can praise him he can fix it if you can praise him he can turn it around if you can praise him, he can regulate it. If you can praise him, he'll give you peace. If you can praise him, he'll give you his joy. If you can praise him, he'll pick you up. If you can praise him, he'll save your soul. If you can praise him, he will give you every desire of your heart. I dare somebody to open up their mouths and begin to praise our God. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is awesome. For the Lord is wonderful. For the Lord is great. I command my hands to praise him. I command my mouth to praise him. I command my lips to praise him. I command every limb on my body to praise him. With my feet, I'll praise him. With my lips, I'll praise him. Everything I have, I'm going to give him praise. I dare you to command yourself to praise him. I dare you to praise him. To praise him. Command him to praise him. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continuously be in my mouth not because things are good but simply because he is God I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth not because everything has worked in your favor I will bless the 
the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth not because he turned it around when I expected him to but I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously shall continuously be in my mouth I'm going to bless him I'm going to bless him simply because I know he's deserving of all the praise. He's deserving of all the honor. And he is deserving of all the glory. Thank you for tuning in this morning to our virtual worship experience. Grab your Bibles, grab your smartphones, grab your tablets, grab everything that you have. And go with us to Obadiah, the first chapter, Obadiah, the first chapter I know it's not a familiar chapter, actually the shortest chapter in the Bible, the shortest book in the Bible, Obadiah, the first chapter, the only chapter, and we will begin reading at the 17th verse. Grab everything that you have. Obadiah, first chapter. In reading at the 17th verse. I'll be reading from God's Word version. And for your hearing, I will also read Joel the Second chapter, in the thirty second verse. But refugees will live on Mount Zion. It will be holy. The descendants of Jacob will get back their possessions. Let me read that again. But refugees will live on Mount Zion. It will be holy. The descendants of Jacob will get back their possessions. Then Joel, the second chapter and the 31st, 32nd verse reads, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call Father we decrease that you might increase we step down that you may step up Help us to articulate your word with clarity, power, and authority. We can do nothing without you. And all that we do, we do it through you. It is in that matchless name that is above all names that we do all things. Jesus the Christ. And it is so. But refugees will live on Mount Zion. It will be holy. The descendants of Jacob will get back their possessions. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to preach from the title of this message, I will testify. I will testify. Testify means to serve as evidence or proof of something existing or being the case. Oftentimes what happens is when life presents problems or when life presents adversity or when life presents situations, we often forget how God has already proven to us 
who he really is. Yeah, yeah, it's easy to forget God when you're going through. Mm -hmm. It's easy to forget God when adversity is all around you. It's easy to forget God when situations come up against you and challenge the very thing you said that you believed in. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I came to tell somebody, don't allow the enemy to make you stop believing what God has promised you. Yeah, yeah. Don't allow the enemy to make you stop believing what God has promised you. In a legal standpoint, it is the testimony of the witness of what they can account for in regards to the case that proves its legitimacy and in with infutable evidence. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's the evidence that they give you. It's the testimony that proves that the case is really what it is. Yeah, it's the, it's the testimony that they give you that you depend on to say, listen, we cannot argue that these are not the facts. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? The facts still remain that God has proven himself to still be God. Yeah, I don't care what you've gone through. He's proven himself to still be God. I don't care what you have faced. He has proven himself to still be God. Have you ever had God challenge you where you were and you were challenged to doubt his ability. You know how we do when God doesn't respond how we expect him to respond. Immediately we say, are you still God? When God doesn't come through how we expect him to come through, immediately we question, should I still believe? But is there anybody out there that can continue to believe even when they don't see him? Is there anybody out there that can continue to believe even when all circumstances and all situations around you say that you should give up? What happens when everything is stacked up against you and it's said that you would fail what happens when everything is stacked up against you and it says that you will not succeed what happens when everything is stacked up against you and what God said is not how it looks I don't know who I'm talking to but I found myself in situations and the promises that God had made wasn't how it looked with what I was going through and what was around me. What happens when everything that you thought that should not be is the very thing that is? Let me tell you something. It is the testimony of the witness that gives the case the legitimacy. It's, it's, it's the irrefutable evidence that proves the case to be what it is. There's nothing worse than getting the logist of a story by a third party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever found yourself listening to something from someone else? That's the worst news you can get. Yeah, that's the worst argument you can get. Yeah, that's the worst thing that you could hear because oftentimes it's them that misuse or misspeak on what God has said. Not because of their credibility, but more so their chances of leaving out substantial facts. I don't care who you are. I'm in a place in my life that I cannot waste time or take the chance of missing what God really has to say. I can't take the time or the chance to miss what God has promised. Every information, every word that he has spoken is substantial to me. Every fact, every fact that he said is substantial to me every word that he's spoken is substantial to me why because man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God I don't have time for any wasted words I don't have time for testimonies that goes beyond what he has said but if God has said it I need exactly what God has said facts have the ability to determine and rather you will believe or you will doubt. So hearing the testimony from the horse's mouth assures you of your conclusion of the matter. What are you saying, Pastor Tim? You have a better chance of believing it when it comes from the person who has experienced it. I don't have time to hear the story from somebody who hasn't gone through anything. I don't have time for he say and she say. I don't have time for it's and outs. I don't have 
have time for what you think or what they say. Well, what? who in the world is they? I don't have time to take my fact from the person that hasn't experienced the circumstances that I'm in. But my thing is, he says that I will testify. I will testify that God did it. I will testify that God is a God of his word. I will testify it doesn't matter what comes up against me. No weapon that's formed against me will be able to prosper. I will testify that although it formed, it could not harm me. I will testify although the enemy planned it and he plotted it, it could not stop me. I will testify that nothing was able to hinder what God had promised. Nothing was able to hinder, hinder what God had promised. You got to be careful of what information you take from people who don't have all of the story. You got to be careful of information you take from people that don't even see it how you see it. You got to be careful of information you take from people who haven't gone through what you've gone through. You got to be careful of information you take from people who has an experience what you've experienced. You got to be careful of information you take from people who does not have, oh yeah, an eyewitness in account to say, listen, I've seen God do it for me, so I can tell you he can do it for you. You got to be careful. Although you may have experienced a loss, God says that you will testify that you recovered all. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God says stand assured that whatsoever he has plan for your life regardless of how it looked you will testify that he's honored his word is there anybody out there that can attest that God has honored his word is there anybody out there that can attest that God has always come through God is not a man that he should lie and neither the son of man that he should repent have he said it and shall he not do it or have he spoken it and shall he not make it good he's the type of God that if he said it he's able to fulfill exactly what he said but don't allow your circumstances to make you doubt God's word I can't afford to doubt him where I am I've seen too many victories to allow the feet to have the last say so I've seen God work too many times for me to doubt his ability to do what I've seen him do before he's healed me over and over again for me to doubt that by his stripes I am healed. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. And by his stripes, I am healed. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I came to tell somebody before you write the story off, allow God to finish what he started. Before you write the story off, allow God to finish what he started. Although it doesn't always add up, be assured that it will always work out. Yeah, yeah, although it doesn't always add up, be assured that it will always work out. Just because you lose things doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you. I came to talk to everyone that felt as if God has forgotten about you. I came to talk to everyone that felt as if God God has forgotten about you. You felt like God left you where you were. You felt like God didn't hear your prayers. You felt like God didn't really care. I came to let you know that when God finished with what he's doing, you will testify that only God could do it. So the Bible says now that Obadiah begins to write to the children of Israel. Obadiah begins to write to the tribe of Judah and he takes a word from the Lord but what God does here in the text God tells him he says listen Obadiah he says you are a prophet to the people he said you are a voice to the people he says I need you to understand to let them know don't become weary in doing well why because it's easy for us to lose focus when life is hard and circumstances are around us but Obadiah begins to tell the children of Israel and the people of Judah in a letter he says listen he says although your enemies from Sodom yeah the Sodomites are come up against you and although they have taken you captive although they have come out of 
the heels and they have you hostage and they have you in bondage. He says, listen, don't be afraid. He says, don't allow it to cause you to give up on God. He says, don't allow it to cause you to doubt what God has said. Why? Because you got to know that we need something that will always be sound in our ear. We need a voice that will be pure to remind us of what God has already done before. Why? Because it's easy to doubt God when circumstances around you say otherwise. Yeah, it's easy to doubt God's ability. Although you've seen him do it over and over again, life has a way of making you question if God was really there with me. But Obadiah begins to write to the children of Israel. And he says, listen, Judah, he says, I need you to catch this. He says, although your enemies make a mockery of you, he says, although your enemies are laughing at you, he says, although your enemies have plot and taken you hostage, he says, but lead this one thing. He says God is a God of his word. God begins to tell Obadiah to write to them and tell them don't become weary in doing well. Oh yeah, yeah, God allow Obadiah to write to them and he begins to prophesy over their lives and he begins to tell them although they're saying that you are down, although they are laughing at you because it looks as if you can't recover. Yeah, although they're saying you be like your daddy although they're saying you would be like your mama although they're laughing because you lost the house the job and the car yeah yeah although you lost a loved one and you lost friends you lost relationships but God says listen he says don't be dismayed he says whatsoever I speak concerning you then don't shall it be he says listen Obadiah tell the people he says don't be weary regardless of what's going on it's hard to focus when my adversity is around me it's hard to stay focused when everything around me tells me to quit it's hard to stay focused when everything around me tell me to give up yeah it's hard to stay focused when everything around me tell me to throw in the towel just because they talk doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you just because they plot doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you even when it looks like they're getting over believe me they're not getting by. They can rise up but they won't defeat or stop what God has promised. You will testify that God did it again. So Obadiah begins to write and tells them. He says the day of the Lord is near for all nations and all as you have done it will be done to you. He says your deeds will return upon your own head but the refugees. Yeah 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 he says listen I know that you plotted against them but you understand it's not going to work he says I know that you came up against them he says but you don't understand who you came up against why because if God be for me he's more than anything that come against me I came to let somebody know if they're going to rise up let them rise if they're going to come for you let them come but one thing they will not be able to do is stop what God has purpose for your life God says I'm a God of my word. He says, whatsoever I have spoken, he says, that so shall it be. So I came to let somebody know it will testify. Yeah, you would testify. You would testify of the goodness. You would testify of the grace. You would testify how he brought you out. You would testify how he made a way. There is nothing so great than hearing the testimony of somebody that overcame. There is nothing so great than hearing the testimony of somebody who God brought out. There is nothing so great than hearing the testimony of someone who has experienced it. Why? Because it's through your testimony that others can see God's hand working. It's through your testimony that others can see God moving in your life. And we shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? Allow God to use your life to be the testimony so that the world can see that he is God. So Obadiah begins to write and tell them. He says, listen, don't become this 
discouraged. He says, I know they're laughing at you. He says, I know that they're mocking you. He says, I know that they're plotting against you. I know they're saying that you will never get up from the fall. He says, I know they're saying you will never recover from the very thing that has come up against you. He says, but the God that we serve, he says, he's coming to all the nations. Yeah, he's rising up against the sodomites. Yeah, he's rising against the ones that have put their plans against you and to destroy you. He says, and my word is, none of their deeds will go unpunished. He says, nothing that they tried will not go and come back to them. He says, it's going to come back to them exactly how I said it would. He says, so don't be dismayed. He says, don't be dismayed because whatsoever man soweth, he says, that shall he also reap. He says, I'm telling you right now, Obadiah, he says, encourage them to continue to move on. He says, encourage them to continue to believe. He says, encourage them to continue to move forward. He says, because you can't afford to allow them to miss me because of where they are. I came to tell somebody, don't allow your circumstances to cause you to miss God and what he said over your life. I don't care how ugly it gets. Keep holding on to the testimony. I don't care how rough it gets. Keep holding on to the word of God. I don't care how rough it gets. Keep holding on to the word of God because the storms may rise and the winds may blow. But when you have a word from God, you can stand on the word and says, oh heaven and hell may pass away. Now word will stand forever. You are the God of the word. And if you said it, I believe it. If you're smoking it, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to run with it. Because you're not a man that you would lie. You're not even like man. So you can't even form a lie. You're not even like man. So you don't even think a lie. He said you're not the man. So there's no lie in you. And whatsoever you speak is the very thing will manifest in my life. So Obadiah begins to tell them. He says trust God. He says because you are an outcast now. But the God that we serve is going to take you back to the holy place. The very God we serve is going to take you back to Mount Zion. And you will be there. And I'm going to give you the promise I made to your father Jacob. And you will succeed even your enemies. Because I am the God that will allow you to testify that he brought me out again. He says, I am the God that will allow you uh, to testify uh, that he made a way again. Uh, he says, I am the God uh, that will allow you uh, to testify uh, though the storm came uh, and the wind blow. Uh, I was anchored in the Lord uh, and he gave me uh, the strength to stand. Uh, he gave me uh, the ability to go on. Uh, he gave me uh, the ability ability to stand up and I will let nothing separate me from him. I will let nothing separate me from his word because his word is everything that I need. Well, I came to tell somebody like Obadiah told them, the promise is still at hand. The promises is still yours. If you can hold on and don't doubt the word he will come through with the testimony you will be able to stand up and say only God only God could do it only God could do it see sometimes he will allow you to face the adversity so that he can prove to you that he is God sometimes he will allow you to go through the hell so that he can prove to you uh, that he can bring you out. Uh, sometimes he will allow uh, you to go through adversity uh, so that he can prove to you uh, that he will give you peace.
saints you will testify and your testimony will be that God is the joy of my life and God is the strength of my life and myself is my help comes from him and nothing will be able to stop me and nothing will be able to block me and nothing will be able to move me nothing will be able to move me because I have a word from God nothing will be able to challenge me because I have a word from God you got to be careful of how you allow the enemy to distract you when God has given you a word but Obadiah the prophet begins to write to them and he tells them pronouncing the doom of Edom he says listen their doom is coming he says yeah their payback is coming he says and listen your restoration of the land is coming back to you listen don't worry about the enemy don't worry about what they say don't worry about what they do if God has made you a promise he's God enough to stand on his word and manifest everything that he said Obadiah reminds them that God is faithful and that when it's all said and done they will testify that God made good on his promise can I tell you God God will make good on his promise. I don't care how it looks. God will make good on his promise. We must learn that we can't allow how it looks to determine our verdict. Yeah, we got to learn not to allow how it looks to make us go ahead and write it off before God has the opportunity to fix it. See, a lot of us, a lot of us rush God. And because we're rushing, we don't give God time enough to finish what he started because he's not finished writing the story when we feel as if it should already be done. You got to be careful. Can you imagine you having God, but you're still going into captivity? Can you imagine you're serving God, but you're still facing adversity? Can you imagine that? You're still serving God, but your enemies have taken power over you. What happens when God does opposite of what you've been praying for? What happens when God allow the ones that you should have rule over actually take rule over you? Can you still serve God? Because rather you believe it or not, if you can hold on, there's a testimony that's coming out of this test. But like I've said before, we want the testimony, but no one wants to test. The only way that you will be able to testify what God has done is you have to be in a situation or in circumstances that's proven to you that you've seen his hand work. You have to be in situations and circumstances that prove to you that he's brought you out. Everyone wants the testimony that I've been delivered from drugs. But no one wants to say that I've tried it or I was on it. Everyone wants the testimony, well, you know, he saved me from the streets. But not everyone wants to actually be in the streets. You got to understand that sometimes God does opposite of what you prayed for. So that he can give you the promise that he made. Can I tell you the road to your promise is through adversity. The road through your pro or to your promise is through trials. The road to your promise is through hiccups. The road to your promise is through people walking away. Yeah. Obadiah is writing to them a prophetic word telling them. Don't mind them laughing at you. I know you locked up, but don't mind them laughing at you because God is going to deliver you. You know what we do. You know how we do. I don't want to hear that until I come out of it. You know, we'll get in a place and say, well, I don't want to hear that church talk right now. How 
will I apply that to what I'm going through right now? But Obadiah tells them, he says, listen, don't worry about your enemies because their day of doom is coming. He says, although they laughed, he says, although they plotted, although they, they, they rose up against you, although they're talking about you, he says, don't become discouraged because of their talk when you have a promise that God has made. A lot of times we become discouraged over talk and we forget what God has said. Don't allow people to talk you out of your promise. Don't allow people to talk you from a place that God has called you to in order to promote you. Promotion only comes through trials. Promotion only comes through adversity. The enemy wants you to see the facts when God wants you to remember the promise. God tells Obadiah to tell the people, don't become distracted of the mockery. Don't worry about them celebrating your downfall. You may have lost some things, but that doesn't mean you lost his promise. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. He says, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in that thing. Don't worry about what's happened. I know it's easy to worry because circumstances say there's no way out of this. I know it's easy to worry because the reality say you can't come back from this. But we serve the God that will bring you the ultimate comeback. So don't worry about what they say. Don't worry about how loud they're celebrating that you lost. Because just the fact of you losing doesn't mean or negate the promises that God has made. God says that the outcast shall live in Mount Zion. He says they're going to go back to the holy place. And the descendants of Jacob will get back their possessions. He says you're going to get back everything that the enemy took from you. Be glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he have given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. Yeah. And be satisfied. Yeah. I love that. And praise the name of the Lord your God. That have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Although you're challenged, God says, I will not allow you to be made ashamed. Yeah, they were laughing. He says, but don't worry about the laughs. Because this is all that you're going to endure on the road to promotion. You will testify. I will testify that I came up from the very thing they thought would destroy me. Yeah, I'm not telling you that this year won't be rough. But I'm telling you that this year will not defeat you if you hold on to the word of God. You will testify. You will testify. I'll testify. See, this thing is personal. You got to have it for yourself. I can stand up here and proclaim it and decree it and speak it that you will testify. But I need somebody out there to say, I will testify. I will testify of his goodness. 
I will testify that he made ways out of no ways. That he's opened doors that were closed. That he actually created doors when there were none. I will testify that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. Obadiah tells them, he says, I prophesied this word over you. That although it's challenging now, God says, you are coming now and you will take hold of the promise. Yeah, you're going to go and you're going to dwell in the holy place. And my word, I will stand by and I will honor it. I'm praying with you this morning. Father, we thank you for everyone that's watching this live. There may be someone that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins. That's not saved. Father, we acknowledge that you are our Lord and our Savior. We acknowledge that you came from heaven into the earth and that you carried the sins to the cross. And from the cross into the grave, you got up on the third day with all power in your hands. Now you sit on the right hand of the Father and you are our mediator. You are our life, our strength. You are our Lord and you are our Savior. We confess with our mouth and we believe in our hearts that you are our Savior. Father, we love you. We thank you for this week being declared a great and successful week as this day has been declared a great and successful day. Regardless of what has come up against us, we stand assured that we will testify you brought us out again. You healed us again. You delivered us again. You made a way again. I will testify. I will decree. I will declare. I will announce that our God is still a savior. So you know what? You don't have to call no more witnesses because I'll stand in the court and declare that you are God. You can give by Cash App Dollar Sign Source Church SC. Cash App Dollar Sign Source Church SC. Cash App. Also, you can give online under the Source Church link. Give online. Also, you can join and become a part of the family under that same link. We're ready to welcome you in. You need to get plugged in to the source. Listen, well, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to get plugged in. It's a great time to get plugged in. If you desire prayer, we're here to pray for you. But whatsoever you need, we are the source. I'm Pastor Tim, and we are the Source Church. We love you. I pray that you have a great and successful week. And we're praying for everyone that's in bereavement, that God comforts you and strengthen you. And those that are sick, that he heals your body. Make sure you share this broadcast and invite somebody to watch this service. And let them know that although they are going through, they will testify that God brought them out. I love you. And may God forever bless you. God bless you.